Good morning and welcome to the weekly up, weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 9th of September 2019 and the time has just gone 11.35 British summer time. And it's been a fairly mixed start to the European uh, session today. Uh, at the very beginning of trading, uh, things got off to a fairly positive start. Uh, but we have seen um, the UK market and Euro Euro-Solid equity markets go in a bit of a different direction. Over the weekend, we had some broadly disappointing trade figures out of China. Exports declined by 1%, which is a big miss on the 2% increase. And Chinese imports declined um, by 5.6%, uh, which, is, which wasn't great, but it was better expected. Uh, the traders were expecting a decline between uh, a decline of 6%. Uh, essentially, the, the trade tariffs between the trade situation between the US and China has gotten worse, and that's been reflected in the figures. Um, both exports from China, essentially the the the, the trade fl goods flow between the US and China has, has been hit by the trading um, by the trade tariffs, and that's weighing on sentiment. And the fact that imports declined by 5.6 percent really shows um, that that demand is slowing down in China, and China is one of the biggest importers uh, of of uh, natural resources in the world. And so in turn, we've seen a decline. In uh, the London listed mining stocks like Rio Tinto, Anglo American, and Glencore, and so on and so forth. Um, their traders are still a bit hopeful and looking into the Euro European Central Bank meeting, which takes place on Thursday. There's a lot of talk about a lot of speculation that the European Central Bank will loosen its monetary policy um, later, uh, later this week. That's going to be in focus. Um, but also, we, we, the British politics is going to be in play and the pound is going to be in play. And sterling is, is higher higher, on, higher this morning, um, and that was on the back of some pretty good economic indicators of the UK. Now, the, for the month of July, the UK GDP estimate for July was an increase of 0.3%. Uh, better than expected, they're expecting an increase of 0.1%. And UK industrial, industrial output and UK manufacturing output increased by 0.1% and 0.3%. 3% respectively, which, is, which isn't amazing, but nonetheless, um, economists were expecting to decline. So there's some good economic indicators of the UK today, and that has helped the, uh, helped the British pound. I'll take a look ahead now at uh, what's coming up, coming up at the major events of the week. Um, if you go to our, mark, uh, our website, cmcmarkets.com, and under insights, uh, and then under news analysis, you'll find you find this article here, well, which, which is a rundown of the um, the various different events coming up during the week. So obviously, keep an eye on, on the Brexit situation uh, the, uh, in relation to how that how that is playing out. Um, we, we've, we've covered the, the trade figures uh, in, in China. Looking ahead to tomorrow, we have UK unemployment and earnings figures. That's going to be in focus, um, seeing as seeing as. These are aspects of the economy which are actually in fairly decent shape. Unemployment is at its lowest level in decades, uh, and earnings are actually, are actually quite strong. Um, and actually, they're, they're comfortably outperforming the inflation level. Looking ahead to tomorrow, we have first half figures from Bogus Group, first half figures from JD, JD Fashion. Uh, we have the launch of the iPhone 11 from Apple on Tuesday. Uh, on Thursday, as I mentioned, the European, uh, um, the, the European Central Bank. Interest rate decision, there's talk of the deposit rate being cut even further into negative territory and even the possibility of a government bond buying scheme announced. On Thursday, we have first half figures from Morrison's. On Thursday, we have third quarter numbers from Broadcom. We have second quarter figures from Kroger Group uh, on Thursday. On Friday, we have US retail sales. That's going to be an interesting one because, as you know, from the most recent non farm payrolls update, U.S. employment is fairly very low, and as is um, the wages are, are, are quite strong, and, and wages are comfortably outstripping, outperforming up, up uh, inflation. So workers are in jobs and they're getting decent money. So, but it, but is that being reflected in retail sales? So that's the trend we will be keeping an eye out for. And lastly, we have full year figures from Weatherspoons. It is worth noting, Weatherspoons are share price at an all-time high only about a week or, week or two weeks ago. The company is uh, kind of bucking the, the wider negative trend of the UK pub sector and is doing quite well. We'll take a look now at some of the major markets, starting off with the FTSE 100. So we can see here that after the fairly aggressive sell-off uh, from, from late July, the market did seem to find a bit of a floor in around this area here, kind of 7,040, and the market has been bouncing back since then. Uh, the level 
highs that we saw on Thursday with the highest the highest level since early August. But we haven't really progressed beyond that. That being said, we are comfortably above the 200-day moving average, this red line here, which comes to play just north of 7,200. So if you can hold above that metric, it's likely we could continue to press on higher from here. And if we press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting uh, this region here, this, this line here, in at 7,470. Uh, if we go beyond that, we could then be looking at targeting this zone here in around 7,600. We can see on a few occasions the metric acted as a resistance on a few occasions, so it might act as resistance in the future. On the flip side, if, it, if the market does manage to turn over on itself and have, we, have a, we have a sharp break below the 30 moving average, we could be looking heading back down toward this area here in around 7,040. Keeping, keeping a look now at what's going on over in Germany and the DAX. So the DAX is clearly in better shape than the FTSE because even though it also had a fairly aggressive sell-off in, in late in late July, we can see at the market, not only did it find a floor in around here, um, 11,270, it has been moving aggressively higher and it's been making steady gains on like the FTSE 100. And notice how it's comfortably back above this blue line here, the 50 moving average, and this yellow line here, the 100 moving average. So it is in better shape and is well above its 200 moving average, this red line here. So it's in a lot better shape than the FTSE 100 is. And if you do manage to kind of press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this zone up here in around 12,476. Uh, 12, and if we go beyond that, we could be get to look, retesting 12,600. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking for this zone here, uh, the highs of early July in at 12,660. If the market does manage to drift a bit lower, we might see some fresh buyers enter the fold and support could be found from this region here, the psychologically important 12,000 mark. And we can see on a few occasions in advance of it, the, uh, just just south of it, um, there was resistance incurred just before 12,000. So that old resistance might become new support. And even if you do have a size of a break below 12,000, keep an eye for this area here in around 11,853. I take a look what's now going on over in the US. So US markets, um, kind of a very common theme here. Obviously, an aggressive sell-off in late in late um, in late July, going into early August. But since then, we have been kind of broadly been been pushing higher, and we can see here that we've hit levels um, only only um, well in the cash market on Friday, but it appears as if it's going to open higher even again. We're back towards levels not seen since early August. The market's come to be above its, uh, its 50 moving average here and the 100 moving average, this yellow line here. So if we do manage to press on higher from here, we could be looking at heading up towards the psychologically important 27,000 because we're currently expecting the Dow to open around 26,855. So we could be looking at retesting 27,000. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at retesting this zone here in around 27,200. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at heading up towards 27,400. If we do manage to drift a bit, uh, just a bit lower on the um, on the Dow Jones, support could be could be found from this area here, this blue line, which is a 50 moving average at 26,563. And then even possibly even below that, from the water moving average at 26,279. 26,297, so just, just just shy of 26,300. And we can see on a few occasions, this yellow line here, the 100 moving average did manage to act as resistance, or there thereabouts act as resistance. And if a metric is acted as resistance in the near past, it makes it more likely it will be, be act, act, act as support in the near future. But obviously there are no guarantees. And if you do have a break below that, we could be looking heading back down towards the psychologically important number of 26,000. Take a look at what's going on on the S&P 500. It's fairly similar, whereby the market had an aggressive sell-off from late July into August. It's been pushing back since. Like with the, like with the Dow Jones, it's comfortably above its 50-day moving average, this blue line. It's comfortably above the 100-day moving average, this yellow line. And we're back at levels not seen since early August. So if you press on higher from here, we're currently uh, expecting the S&P 500 to open at 2,987. If you press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting the psychologically important 3,000 mark. And if we go beyond that, we could then be looking at retesting the all-time high in around 3,028. I move to the downside, might find some support from this blue line, the 50 moving average, 2,000, 
946. We can see on a few occasions, not too long ago, it's almost almost like a, a kind of a textbook example of um of the of the of the, the, the 50 degree moving average acting at resistance. On a few occasions, it actually has kind of a barrier to move higher. So we have good examples of the 50 degree moving average acting as resistance. And if a metric acted as resistance in the past, it makes it more likely it will act as support in the future. But obviously, there are no guarantees. Even if you drop below the 50 degree moving average, this blue, this yellow line, the 100 degree moving average, um, at 2,912. That might act to resist and to support or even towards the 2,900 metric here. Just to kind of a recap on the, with the exception of the FTSE 100, notice how the DAX and the DAX, the, the Dow Jones and the S&P 100 are all comfortably above their 50 moving averages and 150 moving averages and 100 moving averages and 20 moving averages. And Dow theory tells us that uh, the markets, the indices. Uh, should confirm each other and given that if what given that they're all moving in the same direction while they all hold above their respective 50 100 and 200 moving averages it makes it more likely that the kind of wider bullish trend in those markets is going to continue now we've, we've talked about the move to the upside in um in equities we could kind of talk talk about the downside move recent move we've seen in the gold market so gold only in early September, it went on to hit another six-year high, uh, but we did see a fairly aggressive sell-off uh, in, the, in, the, in the gold market uh, on Thursday and also on, on Friday as well. Um, so the wider upward trend is still very much in play. Uh, if you do manage to drift a bit lower from here, support could be found from this zone here, 1493 down to 1480, that area there. Uh, but if the wider upward trend does manage to continue, we could be like a re retest in this area here in around 1555, 1557. And then if you go beyond that, you can look up towards 15, 15, uh, 15 60, and 70. Um, gold, given that there's been a push higher in, gl in global stocks, we might see a bit of downward pressure in gold in the near term because we've seen recently um, a bit more of risk on attitude from traders. So, um, and with that, we've seen a move into a play into stocks and out of assets. That are deemed to be uh, safer, such as gold, such as, such as the Japanese yen and the Swiss franc. Take a look now at Brent crude. So, with the overall kind of feel-good factor about the, the state of the health of the uh, of the global economy, um, one of the kind of aspects that, that has come along with that has been the fact that uh, the Brent market, or the oil market, has recovered too. Um, so the kind of the feel good factor that we're seeing in stocks is also going to be creeping into the to the oil market. So we can see that it's very much in a, in a clear downward trend, but in recent in recent weeks it has been kind of pushing higher. We have seen a few higher highs and a few higher lows in the oil market. Here on Brent, if it continues to press on higher from here, we can look, look at retesting this red line here, uh, the Trinity moving average at 64 spot 24. We can see on a few occasions that acted as very really decent examples of resistance. And if the metric is acted as resistance in the past, it, more, it makes it more uh, likely it will do so in the future. So if you do press on higher from here, keep an eye for this area. But if you do manage to drift a bit lower, support could be found from this zone here in around 60 bucks a barrel. And a move below that could take us back down toward this area here in around 56 spot 71. Having a look now at WTI, similar situation where the wider trend for the past few months has been clearly to the downside. But if you look at the market in the last few weeks, since well, basically the last month or so, it has broadly been pushing to the upside. We've seen a, nice, a few um, higher lows and also combined with a couple, one or two higher highs. So the market is pressing on higher. If you can manage to press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting this area here in around $58 a barrel. And then if you go beyond that, we could be like, like a psychology board, 60 bucks a barrel level, if we we'll be able to keep an eye out for. And then if you go beyond that, the high from the, uh, the mid-July in a 60 spot 83. Any moves to the downside uh, in WTI could find some support from the kind of 54 region here, or perhaps even down towards the 53 region. And if you go beyond that, we, uh, we could really get back down towards 52. Taking a look now at the euro versus the US dollar. So the wider term picture has been very much to the downside. Nice series of, of um, lower lows and lower highs. 
We did see a fairly decent snapback in the euro versus the US dollar last week, but ever since then, and we saw that, you know, we saw that on Tuesday, went with a very bullish candle, but then the last few sessions has been drifting back lower again. There's a lot of already kind of possible, it's possible a lot of the kind of negative news in relation to the pos prospect of the European Central Bank issuing, having some sort of uh, mon losing monetary policy. There's a possibility that that might be already priced in. But you can't really ignore the really kind of downward trend. And if, and if, if we do break below the 110 area on euro dollar, we could take us back down towards the recent low in at one spot 09.25. And below that, we take us back down towards 109. If, on the other hand, though, we can manage to hold above the kind of 110 mark, we could be looking at retesting this area here in at one spot 11.64, 11 last seen in late August. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at heading towards this year here at one spot 24.90, 11 not seen since early August. And take a look finally at the British pound versus the US dollar. So pound dollar has been in a, in a solid downward trend only, only, only last week, less than a week ago. The pound against the US dollar fell to a level not seen since the 1980s. So really give an indication how bearish the wider trend has been. But... This candle that we saw here on Tuesday last week has the potential to be a hammer, and we have seen a fairly decent move back, uh, move to the upside in the past few days. In fact, even even look at look, look at the um, look at the price action we've seen um, on the on, on the um, on the pound versus the US dollar today. We're now back at levels not seen since late July, which is which is quite impressive. And if you can hold above this blue line here, which is the 50-day moving average in at one spot 22.94, if you can hold above that metric, we could be looking at uh, we could, look, we could look to uh, press a bit higher in the near term up towards the kind of 124 area. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking heading back down towards the 126 area. Uh, just before I finish up, um, if you have any comments to make in this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. Thank you very much.